It's so big we included an expansion pack to get it all in. They didn't even tip me! Couple more just oddball pickups here. We got a Metroid Other M, and uh, these are both from the same seller actually. I uh, wasn't especially looking for this game, but uh, was just going through. I'd spotted this. I was just going through their other listings. Anyways, this works. Nothing special. I mean, complete, in, complete in box in pretty good shape. Some bends on the manual there, but no big deal. Um, and then this is a N64 expansion pack, obviously. And it is supposedly not working. I don't see any physical damage uh, looking at the pins and stuff like that thus far. I haven't taken it apart. I don't see anything that looks wrong. So I wasn't sure if this is uh, possibly a case of uh, maybe there being an issue with the console he was testing it on or if there's uh, something actually wrong with this pack. Uh, I'd be interested to find out because uh, I've had a couple of these apart and there's not much to them. So I'm kind of curious what would cause it to fail. It seems like it would have to be a uh, broken trace or cold solder joint or something like that. Tin whiskers, you know, something pretty easy to fix with uh, a bit of, you know, reflowing or something like that, possibly. So, yeah, and I have uh, haven't haven't looked for it, but I don't recall seeing any repairs for these before. So maybe it'll be a, uh, um, a useful video for some, some people that have that kind of oddball problem. So uh, we'll check it out. I'm still waiting on my uh, expansion, oh not expansion pack, uh, memory card. I've got the 382s uh, coming in the mail still. Those aren't here yet. So uh, look at this for now. Well, he wasn't lying. It does not work for sure. And he plugged it in to just to check it out, make sure, you know, wipe down the contacts, stuff like that, the easy stuff. And, uh, yeah, it wouldn't, wouldn't boot an expansion pack game, so safe to say that's the case. Uh, I took a peek at it with the jeweler's loop already. And definitely, um, both these... I think these are ground points up here. Uh, those look pretty crusty, and then all these look pretty crusty down here too. And it looks like at some point they might have got a little bit of cleaning compound up in there as well. Uh, kind of hard to tell what's going on, but we, when you zoom in close with the uh, magnifying glass, there's definitely some kind of some kind of schmutz in between the pins there. So. It doesn't look like whatever this. It, it did seem like he, someone had it apart though for sure. Um, there was a little bit of Q-tip dust on the pins here, or dust strands, you know, uh, little cotton swab strands. And then um, one of the screws in the case was stripped on the left side here. So that's, that's probably the least repairable thing out of this, you know. Uh, but it was, it did hold together. The other screw is holding good, and then so it's probably fine. Um, yeah, it's a little unfortunate, of course. It's easy to avoid stuff like that if you're just being careful, but uh, most people are not, so it kind of comes with the territory, I guess. Anyways, I'm going to uh, hit this with some 90%, try to rinse whatever schmutz is out of there, and then uh, just going to heat reflow it with some nice leaded solder and uh, see how she goes from there.
You might look into reflowing these components too, if need be. But I can tell you right now that is already looking a lot better. I'm going to touch up these ground points up here. And then we'll give it a try after that, I think. Alright, I'm going to check this out. Well, reflowing just the RAM chip itself didn't seem to resolve it. So let's try a bit of reflow on the back side here. See what happens. Well, I guess for reflowing, I've kind of given it my best try, so let's see. I'm not sure how well this is going to focus, but on uh, looking from the bottom up on resistor array 2 there, you can see these are all 51 ohm resistors in an array. And so second one up, this one right here, RA, resistor array 2 as designated on the board and then position number two from the bottom or position number three from the top I guess uh, that is not showing that's the only one in all of those resistors it's not showing 51 ohms is in fact showing uh, 8k or something like that so that was the only thing I could find that was out of spec I'm going to kind of check around uh, upstream and downstream of that and see if there's anything else funky I don't think so and I'm not sure, I guess I can just kind of bodge a resistor over the top of that somehow and disconnect. Yeah, just bodge over the top, I guess. It'll take the path of least resistance, I guess. Anyways, yeah, let's see if I can find a resistor that'll match that. Hmm, not as accurate as you'd like, I guess. 55 ohms. Oh, no, that's right. Very nice.
All right. Moment of truth. Okay. All right. Okay, indeed. So, yeah, that was it. The, um, yeah, resistor array number two there. Yeah, so that was a score there. Took, didn't take that long to figure out. There's my expansion pack, just so you think I'm not cheating. You don't think I'm cheating. But yeah, um, so if you got a bad expansion pack, and I mean, order of operations, you clean the pins first, um, try it out. Um, reflow. Uh, the the pins on the RAM chip were definitely suspect as well. That may have been also the issue, but just not the only issue kind of thing. Um, so yeah, re reflow, um, reflow. Reflowed both the components, you know, components on both sides. There's just not that much there. Um, and then if you still don't get it, then start checking, uh, start checking those resistor arrays, and I bet you, you will find that one of them was bad. It's not the whole array, you know, it was just the one, uh, the one position there. So yeah, right on. Another one for the, for the repair books. It's more of a deal that you just work until you're tired and when you're tired, you don't work anymore. That's your sleep time. Right.